Let's try that again. Is that better? Yes. All right. Well, good morning. Good to see everybody today. And happy Mother's Day. Once again, to all the moms, we're certainly thankful for all that the moms do. And I was going to have all the, the moms stand up today and tell us who their favorite kid is, but my mom's not here, so I don't really care. Um, so, um, but today is Mother's Day, and it's also the beginning of our new series on Family Matters. So beginning today with Mother's Day and up through Father's Day, and maybe even a week or two after Father's Day, we're going to be looking at some passages of Scripture that will be beneficial to all of us, no matter what age or stage of life we're in. So we'll be looking at them through the lens of building strong Christian families. So um, whether you live by yourself, whether you're single or married, whether you have kids or not, the lessons we'll be looking at will be through the lens of family in this series, but all the messages will be beneficial for all of us. And the title of this series is Family Matters because families matter to God. And even you say, well, you know, I don't have a family. Well, today is a great day to become part of God's family. Amen. So if you're here today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, please do not leave here without getting that settled. Everything we're going to talk about in just a few minutes, it's all good, it's all important stuff, but the most important thing is making sure that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ before you leave here today. Please do not leave here today if you have any questions about that. And if you're here and say, you know what, I've been looking for a church family, well, we'd love to have you join us here at Grace Bible Baptist Church. So see me about that uh, before you leave today. Tori, can I have you come up real quick? These are the, the kid outlines. So there's, there's uh, sermon notes on the front, there's an activity on the back. The kids will be staying up with us during this series and we're asking them to sit with their, their families, their parents and their grandparents. So we'll, we'll hand one out for them each week. And kids, if you fill out the front and back, if you complete them all, if you turn them into Miss Jess, you'll get your points for the, the, prize, the prize box for downstairs. Okay, so this will be, you can turn them into Miss Jess um, after the service today and you'll kind of get your prize tokens that you're working for downstairs in our normal junior church time. But our text for today is going to be Luke chapter 2. So if you have a bulletin for today, the outline for today's message is on the back if you'd like to follow along. Or if you want to scan the QR code in the, in the inside of the bulletin, it'll bring it up right up in the Bible, the YouTube, the YouTube Bible app. It'll bring up the, the, the passage and all the outlines, everything right there. But Luke chapter 2 is where we'll be reading from today. We will not be reading the Christmas portion of the passage today. We're going to be down at the end of the chapter, verses 39 through 52. So once you've found Luke chapter 2, if you're able to, I'll invite you to stand with me out of the honor of the reading of God's Word. Starting Luke chapter starting in verse 39, and we'll read down through the end of the chapter in verse... 52. We begin reading here in, in chapter 39, excuse me, in, in verse 39. And when they had performed all the things according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and waxed strong in wisdom, waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. Verse 44, But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they saw him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed, and his mother said to him, Son, why hast thou dost... Why hast thou dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that ye have sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them, and came to Nazareth, and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom, and in stature, and in favor with God and man. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the privilege, once again, of coming into your house. Amen. Father, we are here today, and we want to honor all the moms. Father, mm -hmm. those, those, the, a lot of moms here today, and we certainly want them to feel loved and encouraged and know how much they mean to us. Father, we just thank you so much for the mothers that you've given us here at, during our time on earth. But Father, we pray most importantly that if there's anybody here who doesn't have a relationship with a Heavenly Father, that today that would, that would be... That would, that, would, that would change. And Father, we, we thank you for the, 
your word, Father, we pray that you'll help us to learn from it today. Everything that you want us to do with it, Father. We don't want to just hold your word in our hands. We want to apply it to our hearts and live it out. And Father, I pray that you'll speak to us all today and help us to respond the way you want us to. Father, as always, nobody needs to hear from me, but we all need to hear from you. So, Father, I ask you to speak to me. I ask you to speak through me. Keep me from saying anything that would be of my own will or my own volition. Help us to all leave here today closer to you from the time spent in your house and in your word. We pray all these things in the perfect, precious, the powerful name of Jesus. You know what I said? Amen. Amen. Thank you for standing. You can take your seats. We are living in a day where spiritual things get lost in the shuffle of the busyness of life. We are living in times when godly things are pushed out from the center of our lives to the periphery. We're living in an age where we seem to have lost sight of Christ. And we'll see today that this is nothing new. People have always had a tendency to lose interest in spiritual things. People have always had a tendency to lose interest in God and things. And in our text today, we see that Mary and Joseph didn't just lose interest in spiritual things, they actually, literally lost Jesus. Now, the point of the message today is not to pick on Mary or Joseph and to ridicule them. The point of the message today is to learn from their example how we can avoid that same mistake. Now, we always try to view Scripture through three lenses. One is information. What does the text say? Two is explanation. What does the text mean? And three is application. What does this text mean for me? What does God want me to get from this, and how can I apply it to my life. So we're going to lean into the application part of this today as we get into this message. And the title of today's message is very simply, Don't Leave Jesus at Church. Don't Leave Jesus at Church. Because that's what happened here. We read in verse 41 that Mary and Joseph had set out with their children, their family, their extended family, all their essential belongings, and they went up to Jerusalem for the yearly sacrifice at the Feast of the, feast of the Passover. And guess what happened? They took Jesus to church, but they left him there. And before we're too hard on Mary or Joseph, we need to be honest with ourselves. We've all had times when we've come to church, and when church was over, we packed up and left, and left Jesus behind. Now, I know that God is everywhere at all times, and that's a good thing, because if he wasn't, we'd probably forget about him even more than what we already do. Now, now don't, don't raise your hand. But have you ever walked out of church and before you even get home, you're arguing on the car right there? <clears throat> you, you just walk out of church, but before you're even two blocks away, you're already arguing with your kids? Well, well what happened? Weren't you just singing about Jesus? Weren't you just learning about Him and talking about Him? Well, what happened? You left Jesus in church. <clears throat> so before we point our fingers at Mary and Joseph today for leaving Jesus at church, we've got to admit we've all done the same thing. You ever get in a fight on the way to church? Before you even get here, you're arguing? Your spirit's already messed up before you walk in the doors? What's that mean? You didn't even bring Jesus to church. So let's at least give Mary and Joseph credit that because they at least took Jesus to church with them. They just forgot to bring him home. Have you ever had a day where you forgot to bring Jesus to church, <coughs> but while you were there, through his grace, he showed up anyway? And you experienced his goodness and mercy. Even though you didn't bring him there, he showed up. But then you walked out and you left him there anyway. Mm. Listen, I, I'm not judging, I'm not being critical, because for honest, we've all done it. <coughs> we've all taken Christ for granted and failed to be intentional about keeping his presence at the focus and the central part of our lives. So today we're going to try to see what we can do to guard against that. <coughs> so that we don't ever again leave Jesus at church. So let's look at it and let's see what led to Mary and Joseph losing track of Jesus and leaving him behind at church. And what we see, our first point today is we see that what led to this is that they were unaware. Verse 43 says that as they returned, the child Jesus carried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. And the truth is, once again, we probably misplaced Jesus way more than what we realize. We just assume that, well, I haven't heard from Jesus in a while. I haven't spoken to him in a while, but I'm sure he's around here someplace. But look what verse 43 says. 
If you don't know where Jesus is, there's a chance he might not be there. And there's a danger in assuming that just because you're in church on Sunday, that Jesus is automatically going to be in your home on Monday. There's a danger in assuming, well, I just met with Jesus at church. I'm sure he's going to be present when I get, get to work tomorrow. No, that's not how this thing works. We're not supposed to treat Jesus like a lost dog and think, well, he knows how to get home. I'm sure he'll show up eventually. No, if you look around your home, if you look around your marriage, if you look at your life and think, I don't see any evidence of Christ in my home. I don't see any evidence of Christ in my marriage. I don't see any evidence of Christ in my relationship with my kids. <clears throat> if you look at your life and think, you know, I can't really tell you where Jesus is right now, but don't worry, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Not if you don't bring Jesus with you. That's not how this works. If there's one thing we need to make sure of, it's where Jesus is in our lives. Now, I'll confess, I am terrible about losing my keys. Terrible about losing my keys. I even got one of these little battery power things where you, you can annoy everybody because it beeps when you lose your keys, but the battery died on that, so I lose the keys, and the battery power thing is supposed to help me find the keys. But it, Jess will tell you that I hate having things in my pocket. It's a bit of a sensory thing for me where I just feel uncomfortable. I can't function with keys or my wallet or my phone or anything in my pockets. I just can't function. Except for orange Tic Tacs, those are okay. Those don't bother me at all. Um, so if you were to ask, well, you know, Garrett, how'd you know you wanted to get married? Well, I mean, Jess is awesome, so thanks God for that. But she also has a purse I can put all my stuff in when we go out, so that works out pretty well, too. You know, we, we, have a, we have a good relationship. I love my wife. We have a good marriage. Not a perfect marriage, but we have a good marriage. And anyone that's married can tell you that a good marriage is about compromise. And, and that's part of our compromise. I'll kill bugs in open jars as long as I can put all my stuff in her bag when we go up. Um, and you think, well, gee, you know, what if Jess gets tired of hauling all your junk around in her purse? That, that's fine. I mean, I love my wife, and I'm, I'm not going to get mad about that. But there are going to be some spiders that don't get dealt with, and some jars that stay stuck in the, in the fridge until the rapture comes. Um, but th that's one of the, the conclusions we've arrived at. But look back at our text and notice, Mary and Joseph didn't leave Jesus behind on purpose. This was not intentional. They weren't being negligent or purposely leaving behind. But look how it all started. It all started with something small. It started with something simple. They just weren't aware of where he was. Let's see what happens next. So how did Jesus get left at church? First they were unaware. Next we see they were unconcerned. Verse 44 says they supposed that he was with the company. Now there are a lot of people on this trip. Uh, Warren Wearsby is my favorite theologian. I love reading Wearsby. And he says this about this particular passage. He said, People travel to the feast in caravans, the women and children leading the way and setting the pace, and the men and the young men following behind. Relatives and whole villages often traveled together and kept an eye out for each other's children. At the age of 12, Jesus could have easily gone from one group to another and not have been missed. Joseph would think that Jesus was with Mary and the other children, while Mary would likely think that Jesus... Jesus was with Joseph or the men or with one of the other relatives. So this was not unlikely to see large groups of, of people traveling with the kids kind of shuffling between the groups. So we need to understand, this wasn't just Joseph and Mary and Jesus. It says there's an entire company of people who have made this trip for the feast of the Passover. So the fact that they couldn't lay eyes on or give a definite account of where Jesus was, it wasn't that big of a cause of concern for Mary and Joseph. They assumed that Jesus was there and that everything was okay. And now, please hear me, I am not saying that we should walk around fretting and worrying and anxious and stressed out and freaking out all the time, but can I tell you something? If there's ever a time to get concerned, if there's ever a time to take seriously, it's when you look at different areas of your life, you look at different relationships and aspects of your life, and you find out that Jesus isn't there. That's a cause for concern. And before you say, no, I know what you're saying, Garrett, but if Jesus weren't present in my life, I would know. I would be able to tell if Jesus wasn't in my life the way I thought he was. Don't be so sure about that. Keep your place here and turn back to the Old Testament book of Judges. Mm -hmm. But in Judges chapter 16 in your Bible. In Judges chapter 16, we read about a man named Samson. And Samson had been busy <coughs> whooping up on Israel's enemies, namely the, the nation of the Philistines. 
But once you find Judges chapter 16, look down at verse 20. Delilah here is mentioned. She's the woman who had <coughs> Samson gotten involved with, and we know that she was greedy. Okay, she was troubled. And the Philistines had come to her and said, you know, if you find out where Samson gets his strength, we'll pay you, Delilah. We'll make you rich. And she kept asking him over and over and over. And he finally told her, he said, Delilah, I'm a Nazarite. I, I, the strength that I have is in the oath that I made to the Lord to not cut my hair. If anyone were to ever take a raise from my head and cut off my hair, I would lose my strength. I'd be like any other man. Okay, so, that, so now that Delilah knows his secret, she tells it to the Philistines. And look what happens here in verse 20. Delilah said, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awake out of his sleep and said, I will go out as, as at other times and shake myself. Mm -hmm. Notice here, he's completely unconcerned. Yeah. He says, this is no big deal. I've done this before. I'll do it again. But check out what happens. Yeah. He wished not that the Lord was departed from him. Mm -hmm. Now, why was Samson completely unconcerned? Because he was completely unaware that the Lord had left him. Yeah. And, and here's a sticky point for us. Oftentimes, when we're not that concerned about Jesus or his presence in our lives, it's because we're not aware that he isn't there anymore. Show me a Christian who's unconcerned about Jesus, and I'll show you a Christian who's probably unaware that they forgot about him and he left long time. Show me a Christian who's unconcerned about Jesus, and I'll show you a Christian who's probably unaware that they forgot about him and left him a long time. This idea that, hey, I can live however I want without any thought or concern for Jesus, we need to be careful about that. Just because we're saved doesn't mean we can do whatever we want. Numbers chapter 14, verse 42 says, Go not up. Why? For the Lord is not among you. Hmm. And you know who that was written to? The nation of Israel. Yep. God's chosen people. Yep. But what happened? They forgot about God. Yep. They started living however they wanted to live. And when their enemies attacked, the Israelites wanted to go fight them. But Moses said, wait up. Don't go out there. Mm -hmm. It says this in verse 42. Go not up, for the Lord is not among you, that ye be not smitten before your enemies. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and you shall fall by the sword because you are turned away from the Lord. Therefore, the Lord will not be with you. But what happens when we're unaware and unconcerned about Jesus and what he says? We do it anyway. When we are unaware of where Jesus is or unconcerned about what he says, we, we make our own choices. And what happens? Verse 44 says, But they presumed to go up to the hill. Nevertheless, the ark of the covenant of the Lord and Moses departed not out of the camp. Then the Amalekites came down, and the Canaanites, which dwelt on that hill, and smote them in discomfort of them, even unto Horma. You know, we, we see this all the time, where people think, well, I'm saved, I can do whatever I want. Really? Can you give me a chapter and verse? Well, well God's going to protect me. Really? You have a guarantee from God that you can live however you want to live, forget all about him, but he's going to show up in, like a genie in the body, bottle and rescue you whenever you want to? Now listen, sometimes... He, he, he does show up out of his love and his mercy, and he does spare us, but sometimes, guess what? He lets us get our butts kicked, so maybe we wouldn't be a little bit more aware of where he is and more concerned about his presence in our lives. Well, let's look back to verse 44, and we see, why weren't Mary and Joseph concerned when they didn't find Jesus? It says they supposed that he was with the company. Yeah. They assumed that somebody else was taking care of him. And this is an area that all the parents here today, we need to pay special attention to. And let me preface this. I am so thankful for the workers that we have here that volunteer with all of our kids' ministries. They do a great job. I'm really thankful for all those who invest in the kids and teach the kids' classes. From Sunday school to missions and memorization class on Sunday night, Awana clubs, youth group, yeah. yes, day camp, after school, Bible club, all of it. Yeah. I'm thankful that we have people here who volunteer to teach kids about Christ and invest in their lives. Yeah. Amen. I'm thankful that, as your pastor, I'm thankful that you've chosen to raise your kids up here under my preaching and leadership. That means a lot to me. Take that seriously. But can I tell you something? It's not your kid's Sunday school teacher to lead your kid spiritually. That's right. Yeah. It's not their classroom teacher or their Awana teacher or their group leader's responsibility to lead your kid spiritually. That's right. It's not your pastor's job to lead your kid spiritually. Well, whose job is it? It's your job. Yep. And if you go through life assuming, well, my kids go to Sunday school, I'm sure they're okay. I bring my kids to church, I'm sure they're going to pick up whatever they need there. 
Or my kids go to Christian school, and I'm sure they're going to be okay. Listen, all those things are great things. And man, I am glad that you bring your kids to church and get, let them get immersed in God's Word. I'm glad they're involved in preaching and teaching here at our church. But don't think for a single minute that the one, two, or three hours that, that your kids are here under the supervision of other adults here at our church is a replacement for you leading them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's not. Don't make the mistake that Mary and Joseph made where they just assumed that someone else was going to take care of what was going on with Jesus. They started off unaware in verse 43. They, didn't know, they knew that Jesus wasn't there, but they didn't know it. And verse 44 says they were unconcerned. They just assumed that someone else was taking care of Jesus. But let me ask you parents, grandparents, who's taking care of Jesus in your family? Are you even aware of who's teaching your kids? Or what they're being taught? Because yeah. if you have no idea who's teaching your kids or what they're being taught, that's a recipe for disaster. Yeah. It's no one else's responsibility to raise your kids spiritually. That's your responsibility. So it seems they were unaware, they were unconcerned. Next we see what happened next is Jesus was unfound. <clears throat> this is where Mary and Joseph realized we have a problem. Look back at verse 44 and notice how quickly this situation turns. Verse 44, they weren't concerned when they couldn't locate Jesus. They assumed that he was somewhere in their traveling party. And look how little they were concerned about this. Verse 44 says that they went a day's journey. This wasn't... Jesus is here, but I, I can't find him. I'm sure he's okay. Let me pull over real quick and just double check, make sure he's with us. No. They said, even though we can't say definitively where he is, I'm sure he's here somewhere. And they proceeded to travel for a full day before actually realizing we have a situation on our hands. Now again, let's not be too hard on Mary and Joseph. And if you say, well, I'd never leave my son or daughter behind and just assume that everything is okay. I would never go a full day without knowing where my son or daughter is. Remember... This, we're not talking about this in relation to our kids. We're talking about this in relation to Jesus. Thank yourself for a minute and be honest. Have you ever gone a day without paying much attention to where Jesus was in your life? We might think, you know, I can't believe Mary and Joseph went an entire day without Jesus. But man, for a lot of people, that's nothing. Some people, some Christians even, seem to go days, weeks, months, and years without ever really paying much attention to where Jesus is in their lives. Yeah. So let's not be too hard on Mary and Joseph here when they realize that Jesus isn't there because it only took them a day. But how long did it take us to realize when Jesus isn't in our lives the way he should be? It only took them one day. But how long does it take us to realize when Jesus isn't around? How long does it take us to realize, you know, I know Jesus was with me at church, but he's not here anymore. And, and please hear me. I know Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, but that doesn't mean you can't ever leave him or forsake him. Jesus might never forget about you, but that doesn't mean you'll never forget about him. And when you have this moment that we read about here in verse 45, I call this the home alone moment. That's what I have written here in my Bible. If, if, if anybody knows the movie Home Alone, you'll understand this reference. There's a family called the McAllisters, and they're on a plane headed for vacation. You know, the, the, the mom, the dad, the brother Buzz, the sister, all their extended family. The cheapskate uncle who seems really poorly in the shower, and you don't even remember him. The cousin Fuller who pees the bed is always a Fuller, right? As one in every family. Um, <laughs> the, the, even John Candy makes an appearance with a traveling polka band at one point. So I'm not endorsing the movie Home Alone, I'm just trying to set the context here. But anyway, the story centers around this boy named Kevin McAllister. And while well, the day of their trip, they're, they're rushed, they've overslept. They're, they're hurrying to get packed, and they get to the airport. They finally get there, they make it on the plane, and they finally take a deep breath. He made it. But the mom's still a little frazzled. She, she's unsettled. She's thinking through, you know, did I forget anything? You know, the coffee maker, no, no, I turned that off. The, the garage door, maybe I left that open. Did I turn off all the lights? Did I lock all the doors? And then she sits up and she yells, Kevin! And she realized she left her son at home. So she's freaking out. So Mary has her home alone mo moment here in verse 45. Where she sits up and she yells, Jesus! We forgot Jesus! Now that's about where the connection between our text and home alone ends. Um, <laughs> because honestly, the temple wasn't nearly as dangerous as the McAllister's house turned out to be in the movie. I mean, you know, Jesus wasn't at the temple, you know, booby trapped in the place and launching paint cans at Harry and Mar. Um, but still, something think unthinkable had happened because Mary and Joseph had left Jesus in church. But look at their response. Verse 45 says that once they realized that Jesus wasn't with them, they turned back to Jerusalem, seeking him. 
Now, how about us? How do we respond when we realize that Jesus isn't with us the way that we thought he was? Do we just go about our day and think, well, you know, sooner or later, Jesus is going to show up in my family. Sooner or later, he's going to show up in my marriage. Sooner or later, he's going to show up in my relationship with my kids. Or do we think, you know, I'm not seeing any evidence of Jesus in my life, in my, in my relationships, so I'm going to stop what I'm, going to, what I'm doing. I'm going to stop everything right now, and I'm going to turn it around, and I'm going to start searching for Jesus. You know, if you do some introspection, and you answer honestly with yourself and say, you know what? I don't really see Jesus in my life the way I should. I've been unaware and unconcerned about him for a while, and now he's unfound in my life. I look around in my life, and, and I don't see him anywhere. Well, there's good news, because you can find him today. Amen. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, He shall seek me and find me when you so search for me with all your heart. Yes. Psalm 119, verse 2 says, Blessed are they that keep his testimonies, and they that seek him with a whole heart. You can find Jesus today, but guess what? You're not going to find him if you're not looking for him. Right. You can find Jesus today, but you are not going to find him if you're not looking for him. Look back at our text. We see two things that are important to know. And there are two things we have to understand and be realistic about. One is this. When you forget about Jesus for some time and leave him behind for a while, it might, it might take some time before you find your way back to him. It's not always an immediate response. Verse 45 says that they turned back to search for Jesus, but guess what? They didn't find him right away. <laughs> Verse 46 says it took them three days before they finally located where Jesus was again. So if you're here today and say, well, that, that's me. I, I've left Jesus behind. I've forgotten about him. I haven't really been that concerned about Jesus lately. It might take you some time to get back to where he was. It might take some effort to get back to where he, uh, where he was. And you think, man, I don't, you might think, I don't even know where to look. I, I've been away from Jesus for so long, I don't even know where I'd start searching for him anymore. Well, I've got good news for you. If you're in church today, you're in the right place. Right. Look at verse 46. Read this with me. After three days they found him where? In the temple. He was in the temple. Can I tell you something? And I'm not trying to be funny or cute or clever or anything like this. I mean this sincerely. Jesus likes church. He spends a lot of time there. It's a pretty big deal to him. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 says that he loves the church so much that he gave his life for it. Yes. Amen. So if you're thinking, man, I really do want to find Jesus. I do want to get back to having him more involved in my life. I want him to be in my home. I want him in my relationships. I want him in my relationship with my kids. I want him in my marriage. I want him to lead me. I want him to guide me. You came to the right place. Because can I tell you something? Jesus is here today. He's here. And he's here doing the same thing we find him doing here in verse 46. Look at verse 46. Jesus was in the temple. He's in the church. It says, hearing them and asking questions. If you're here today, please understand. No matter how long it's been since you've been searching for God, no matter how long you may have relegated Him to the periphery of your life, if you forgot about Him for a while, He still hears you today. He didn't stop listening. Right. He, he, the Bible says that you, know, you might not have even said anything out loud, but the Bible says that He knows your heart. Right. He knows your mind. Psalm 139, verse 4 is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. It says, There is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest all together. That's right. He hears you today. But look what else he does. He asks questions. Now, I don't know what questions Jesus is asking you today. But I do know one thing. If you don't hear him asking anything, it's because you're not listening. Yeah. He hears you today. He asks questions today. So what is Jesus asking you today? What, what is that voice you hear today? Is it saying, is this almost over? No, that's not Jesus. <laughs> that's because you've got a good meal planned for after Mother's Day at the church, or it's your flesh because you know in your heart that you've left Jesus behind. And you don't like the Holy Spirit revealing that to you. About, revealing that to you. Maybe you're not so sure you're ready to commit to searching for Him and make Him a central part of your life again. No, I don't know what Jesus is asking you about today, but... Maybe he's asking, you know, why do you come to church each week but leave me here when you go? Why do you come in and talk about me and sing about me? But when the service is over, you forget about me for the rest of the week until we come back in on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's asking, I'm here with you today, but are you going to take me with you? 
Jesus is speaking to our hearts today. Pilate said in Matthew chapter 27, verse 22, what shall we do? What shall we do with Jesus, which is called Christ? Mm. And that's a question we all have to answer for ourselves today. What are we going to do with Jesus? Maybe in the past you've been unaware or unfocused on where he is or the role that he plays in your life. Maybe you've been unconcerned or uninterested in, in Jesus lately. But today we're going to see something else. We're going to close today by seeing that if Jesus is missing from your life, notice what the result is. If Jesus is missing from your life, you will always be unsatisfied. Started with them being unaware of where Jesus was. Then they were unconcerned about where Jesus was. And he was unfound when they couldn't locate him. And while he was lost, while they were away from Jesus, there was no satisfaction. Look, look down at verse 48. When they saw him, they were amazed. His mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee with <coughs> sorrow. <coughs> so, so listen up for just a second. If you're here today, I'm, I'm not going to ask you to, to raise your hand or anything like that, but I want you to think about this. If you claim to really be a child of God, if you claim to be part of his family, and you look at your life, and you know that Jesus is missing from it, if that doesn't break your heart, that's a problem. Because notice, when Mary and Joseph were away from Jesus just for a few days, they were sorrowing. Mm -hmm. If you can live your life in a constant state of, of Jesus being forgotten about and not concerned with him at all, and you think that you're fine, you're not fine. You're not fine. Notice here in our text that when Mary and Joseph recognized that Jesus was missing, they had no peace, they had no comfort, they had no relief until they found Jesus again. And here's the thing. You might think you're happy. You might even actually be happy right now, even though Jesus is missing from your life. Hebrews 11.25 says, There is pleasure in sin for a season. So you might think you're okay for now. You might think things are fine for now. But mark this down. There is going to be, come a time when you are not going to be okay without Jesus. Yeah. And you're not going to be okay when that time comes. But there is going to come a time when you are not going to be okay without Jesus. There's going to come a time when you're going to need Jesus in your life. There is no true happiness apart from Jesus. There is no true peace apart from Jesus. Ephesians 2.14 says that He is our peace. There is no freedom apart from Jesus. The verse continues says that He has broken down the wall of partition. So raise your hand if you want peace today. Raise your hand if you want freedom today then understand this. You better find out where you left Jesus and run back to him as fast as you can or you're never going to be satisfied. Right. Yeah. You'll never have peace. You'll have happiness for a time. You'll have contentment for a little while, but you're going to be completely unsatisfied for all these yeah. knowing that you left Jesus behind when you could have lived in your entire life. Yes. Amen. The day is coming when you're going to stand before the Lord and you're going to get an account for what you did with Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5.10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, yes. Yes. so that each one of us may receive what is due for us, what we have done in the body. We're going to give an account, like Matthew chapter 27, verse 22 says, for what we've done with Jesus, who's called the Christ. And we will give an account if we come to church, but leave Jesus here when we leave. We're going to give an account if we meet with Jesus on Sunday, but he's noticed we're missing from our lives for the rest of the day. We're going to give an account if we come in and talk about Jesus and worship Jesus and sing to Jesus on Sunday, but he's absent from our relationships. We're going to give an account if when we leave church, Jesus stays here behind and we don't take him with us to our home, we don't take him with us to the workplace, or to the we're going to give an account for what we do with Jesus. So let me close by, by asking a few questions today. One is, right now, somewhere to ask you, where is Jesus in your life? Do you even know where he is? Are you like Mary and Joseph saying, you know, I, I prayed a prayer a long time ago. I'm sure Jesus is around here someplace. That's not good enough. If you look at your life and say, you know what? I'm not really sure where Jesus is in my life right now. I, I can't tell you where he is in my life and my relationships. But let me ask you a follow-up question. How concerned are you about that? Does it matter? 
or, or, or will we close in just a few minutes? Is, is meeting with Jesus today, is he just going to stay here in, the, in this building? How concerned are you about where Jesus is in your life? If Jesus has been unfound, you know, if you look around and say, you know what? I've been looking for him, I can't find him. How concerned are you about that? Because we see today you will never be satisfied until you get Jesus back in your life. Mary and Joseph, they left Jesus at church because they were unaware, they were unconcerned. Jesus was unfound, and as a result, they were unsatisfied. But this text was written for us to grow from, from the learn. Let's not leave Jesus at church today. There we go. If we can understand the importance of prayer for transmutation. If we're here today, we have a very head bowed.